embers of the flame of God. I am here in your midst this day, rejoicing, rejoicing in the fire of the heart. Now let us reason together, saith the Lord. So be seated. I extend my heart flame to you, my purple fiery heart. That heart of mine will see you through. Therefore I take from that heart in this moment its own electronic presence. I place it in the heart of your holy Christ self. And then what shall we see appear? We shall see the striving of your souls to enter in to your own heart's chalice, to clear the misuses of the 12 petaled heart chakra, to make way for the living Buddha to enter the secret chamber of the heart. Yes, then, beloved, little by little, as you purify one, the 12 petal chakra, to the secret chamber of the heart, you will have increments of the replica of my own heart flame. And as you place essences of my flame superimposed upon your threefold flame, we shall begin that balancing action Remember that I have said, we, we must do this, beloved, together. I can do something for you, but most of all you must do for yourselves. As we have spoken before, there is nothing more important than the flame of God immortality. So if you are content to live with a tiny flame that you have never expanded, never become the magnanimous heart of your beloved Lanello, the fiery heart of El Moria in the will of God, well, beloved, you have a journey to cross. You have challenges to deal with. Oh, beloved, when you increase the heart flame and balance it, you will know empowerment. You will know why some life streams do not tire, do deliver the word and the work. And these are the saints of God from the Himalayas to the far reaches of Japan, to the mountains of China, to Africa, Europe, and this entire hemisphere. Oh yes, beloved, there are those who by love increase that pink plume. But then there are those among you who neglect accuracy in wisdom's flame, or you do not exercise the power of God, the will of God, the intensity of God, the intensification of the God flame within you. Some time ago, the messenger recorded St. Germain's heart meditations. Many of you use these. I still recommend that you put them on when you awaken in the morning and listen to my heart meditations and the teachings given by the messenger. For the heart is everything. There is no such thing as ascended beings, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, who do not have a threefold flame that far exceeds their own height and even envelops worlds. Contemplate this, for this is your future star. But in the present, beloved, try as you may. If you do not balance the threefold flame, you are not going very far very quickly. For the threefold flame is the essence of your immortality. The threefold flame is the only thing that is immortal about you. Think of this. If that threefold flame be one sixteenth of an inch in height, I say nourish it, water it, love it, expand it, and give through that heart flame your love, your joy, your wisdom. 
You are a tremendous wonder of the will of God. Understand, beloved, that that which is mortal will remain mortal unless either you ignite the flame or God ignite the flame. Well, it is God who has ignited this flame, beloved, and it is the individual who has put it out put it out through anger of various kinds, Martian energies, etc. Now understand, beloved, there is not eternal life without the flame in the heart. There is no ascension unless you balance the threefold flame. There is no victory unless it be the victory of your own immortality. All the rest will go into the cremation pyre. Remember that, beloved. What will be left is the essence of a soul that may have gained something of immortal life, but not enough to make the ascension. You say, when will enough be enough? Well, beloved, do more than you think is enough. Do 10 times, 100 times more than you think will be enough. For God does measure the heart. God does measure the heart. Therefore, see, beloved, as you look at your flesh, you look at your bones, you look at the wondrous body you have, still you know this body cannot transcend this octave. So you see, beloved, the only thing you have going for you is the balancing of the threefold flame. And to do this with enough intensity so that in that threefold flame you remove from yourself then crustaceans of misuses of those plumes. The plumes of the threefold flame ensconced in the white sphere below make up the four points of the four lower bodies. Now, beloved, see then, if you would build for eternity, then build the threefold flame. If you lose that flame, beloved, you will reincarnate until you find it again, and no master will sponsor you to find a lost threefold flame, for it is your responsibility to keep that flame, which is why I have ordained the keepers of the flame fraternity. What flame do we keep? We keep the flame of the heart. We keep the flame of the heart. Where is there the fuel for the flame? It is an unfed flame. God fuels it over the crystal cord. So long as you tend it, so long as you are at peace with all mankind, with elemental life, peace, peace, beloved, in the heart. Therefore, it is good, it is well to contemplate one's mortality. I ask you to contemplate it, for you will see very quickly that you must do more if you are to guarantee your victory in this life. And do you know you are the guarantor of your own victory? Who else can guarantee your victory? It is your choice. It is your day. It is your moment when you fly solo through the capstone of the pyramid, one at a time, only one may enter the kingdom of God at the same time. So, beloved, I come to you, for I desire to place upon you, and I do place upon you now, a cape that is not the replica of my cape, but a cape nonetheless, and that cape is a cape of responsibility and a cape by definition of cape ability. What is your cape ability? What do you carry in stature as a son or daughter of God? What is your mantle? Do you have a mantle? Not all have a mantle for they have not earned it by meritorious deeds in many lifetimes. 
The mantle, beloved, is important, for it is a sign of empowerment, a sign that your holy Christ, self or an ascended master, has deemed you worthy of having that mantle. Contemplate this, beloved. There is a succession of lifetimes that you have entered according to your karma, according to your good works. You have entered those lifetimes, you have performed service, and if you were surrounded by wise parents, wise teachers, and even were invited to be under the tutelage of hierarchs of light that are most often never seen on earth, such as Melchizedek and others. Now, beloved, think of a lifetime when you have had the greatest success, the greatest momentum, whereby you have wrought wonders in your community, served your people, and been at one with God. This is the lifetime that you want to use, capitalize on and say, I have meritorious deeds of this life. I do not want to see them eradicated. I do not want to see them in a situation where I will lose what I have gained. Now, since you do not all have memory of all previous lives, you may not realize how you have failed and won, won and failed alternately. This must be contemplated. The hour of contemplation is the hour of retirement. When you go before your God, when you kneel in prayer, when you speak to your Lord, your Holy Christ self, where you implore the presence of the Holy Spirit and the Father, Mother, God, where you come to the place of Jesus, where you see him on the 14 stations of the cross, come to the place, beloved, where you see clearly that you are accruing and adding to that threefold flame meritorious deeds. Deeds, beloved. Dynamic decrees give you momentum, give you clearance, give you transmutation. But then there are the works of the hand, the works of the mind, the works of the inner spirit. Therefore, admonish the self, enter the self, enter the self as God, enter the self as God. Let your cumulative victories thus far of the past 10, 20, 30,000 years not be marred by actions in this life so that we will have to turn you back and say, sorry, but you must take another round for you have not followed what you should have followed. You have taken for granted that you can use the light, use the law, and yet not be on the right side of the law or the light. In this arena, beloved, put on, put on your armor. From head to toe be armed, wield the sword, wield the sword of white fire, wield it unto yourself. Wear the armor that you might bind your own dweller on the threshold. Wear the armor, beloved, that you might deal with aliens and fallen angels and spacecraft who have no right to be in or on this planet. Call to the ruby ray. He is the great master who is determined to rid this earth of aliens, fallen angels, etc., that come from other star systems and have no right to corrupt the children of humanity, save the fact that the children of humanity have lost their God, lost the commandments, lost the teaching. Therefore, they are vulnerable, and therefore these aliens take their opportunities, whether to steal body parts, whether to take children right out of the womb in the attempt to prolong 
their quasi race. I am speaking to you at the closure of this year with but several months. And I ask you to remember the teachings of the messenger on going around the cosmic clock and coming back to the 12 o'clock line victorious. The messenger has pointed out to you that if you make karma on the early points of the clock, you will not have the momentum to rise back to that 12 o'clock line. Therefore, if you were to stand before the keepers of the scroll this day, and if you wish to be invited to that retreat of the Royal Teton, you may be shown how you have not fulfilled the karmas of the weeks, the months, the days, and the years. Therefore, we have incomplete rounds on the cosmic clock showing. I promise you that I will do all in my power to bring you to that place this night where you can not only see the problem of not concluding cycles, but you may take the memory of that vision back with you to this octave. It is necessary to understand that only you can make your ascension. This has been said during this conference, but I must say it again. Only you can make your ascension. Thus I come with a message of supreme responsibility. Some have said that those who believe they are the Christ are insane. Others have said we will realize our inner Christhood and we will move on. There is that moment of the slip twixt the cup and the lip. See to it that this does not happen to you. Thus in the next two months, beloved, go back, go back in your own charts, go back in the mind and clean up those points on the cosmic clock that have tripped you up for thousands of years. It is one thing to balance one's karma and make the ascension at 51%. It is another to go the whole nine yards unto the 100%. What does that give you, beloved? Balancing 100% of your karma means that you are no longer tied to the laggard evolutions of this planet or any evolutions of this planet if you do, do not desire to be tied to them. If you ascend with remaining karma, that beyond the 51%, you will find that it will take you sometimes decades and more than decades to balance karma at the etheric octave that would have been so easy for you to balance while in embodiment. For earth is the place of action. This is the place of action, beloved. I would like to see you accrue to your causal bodies that 100% balance of karma and then a greater mastery, a greater wisdom, a greater sense of walking the earth fulfilling the inner Christ within you, walking and talking with your holy Christ self. Try being alone, beloved, where it is safe, walking in the mountains, walking by the stream, going here and going there in nature. How long do you feel comfortable to be alone? And when does it come upon you that you feel the need for others around you? It is good to test oneself in these matters, for, beloved, the solitary climber is the victor. And there comes a time in life when you must be ready for aloneness, and that aloneness translates into all oneness. Therefore, be self-fulfilling. Therefore, bring to the heart resources untold, resources from God and for your labors long in many centuries. 
I turn my attention in my address to you this day on burdens that are upon the people of the world, upon this nation, burdens of terrorism, burdens of drugs, burdens in the youth and the children who do not have proper schooling, proper food, proper care, loving. These problems have been with us. They have been with us for a long time. But, beloved, what is happening today is an outrage. And the entire spirit of the Great White Brotherhood, every ascended master and cosmic being in this moment, is absolutely outraged as what is being done to the children, to the people, to the foods, to the media, to what the lifestyle and civilization is all about. I ask you to take note when you come and go in your world across the nations. Write down what you observe in people. And in this notebook, a special notebook, I ask you to write your impressions of people, all kinds of people. Do this on an ongoing basis. And from time to time, ask yourself, is this individual or that individual or these people I have seen, people you do not even know but have observed? Ask yourself, is what these people are doing going to afford them their ascension? Or will it deprive them of their ascension? It is truly amazing, beloved, that so many life streams of high quality, very high quality, who have had that high quality in past civilizations, now are ready to be lax, lax in their morals, lax in every part of their lives, so lax that they cannot measure up even to the God's littlest angel. And why are they lax? because this is what they see in the media. This is the example of parents. This is the example of societies. And so, gradually, and finally, as the course of an avalanche, a civilization can come down and be destroyed, even when a large percentage of the people were good people. And so I submit to you that being a good person is not enough. You must be more than a good person. You must be a God person. A God person, beloved, meaning that the God, your mighty I am presence, is not a thousand leagues away, but hovers above you because of gentle words and kindnesses, because you have taken on a labor for me, for the goddess of liberty, because you have understood the law of harmony and that it is lethal to ever violate that law for any reason. Look then upon the people of the world as the messenger has looked upon many in her travels, and you will see fine souls who have not found the key to open the door to studies in alchemy, to the science of the spoken word, to the teachings of El Moria, to the ascended masters. And when you as those who have come here newly, and others have been here for decades, as you come in to the awareness of the joy of God, you immediately forsake the ways of old friends that are no longer compatible because they go one way and you go another. There are only two ways to go, beloved, up or down. And when you choose to go up, many of your friends will leave you, and you will be introduced to new ascended master friends, ascended masters, and their chilas. 
So, beloved, set a shining example, yet lean as the willow tree, to listen to those who do not understand, for whom it will take some time to realize that certain things must be let go of. So, beloved, you may see in your mind's eye a planetary avalanche. You see the nations, the mountains, the cities, the people, the desert places. And there is a descent of consciousness. There is a descending of consciousness that is ever so subtle. The media brings in one lower state of consciousness after another, and the people adjust, and thus they follow, and they follow. And the avalanche of the human consciousness is descending, and therefore I say to you this day, who will raise them up? Who will awaken them and say, wake up, wake up, wake up. You're going the wrong way. The way is up, not down. Yes, yes, beloved. I am counting on you to find the fiery souls. I am counting on you to realize that every soul that is saved through your service, your decrees, your going after that one, nurturing that one, speaking with that one, inviting that one to be in your midst, in your study centers, and so forth. If the record shows that you or a group of you have saved a soul, I, Saint Germain, will reward you for every soul of light you save. And that saving means the ultimate saving. Take on the burden of your brothers and sisters. Take on the motto of Boys Town. He's not heavy, Father. He's my brother. Remember those words, beloved. Remember those words. You are not here for yourselves. Balance your karma. Know the brotherhood of St. Francis and St. Clair. Know your mission. Tear yourself from what you have been doing for thousands of years. For I, Saint Germain, will not be able to take you to your ascension. You must have the qualifications for the ascension. And when you do, beloved, then I will stand beside you before the Lords of Karma. And then, and only then, can I sponsor you. From this point, in time to the point of your eternity i bless you i seal you in the violet flame and i give to your holy christ self a concentrated elixir of that flame it will continue to multiply in that cup so long as you continue to give your violet flame decrees i smile and rejoice in the happiness of the spirit and I say move on move on you have worlds to conquer